Summary of How to Be a Power Connector by Judy Robinett Introduction What defines a great networker? Is it someone who makes successful connections with others? Who remembers everybody's name? Or is it someone who is dynamic or memorable? These are indeed the qualities of a great networker. But still, they are also not good enough. Our still evolving world is demanding new things from business professionals. Just as Darwin theorized his all about survival of the fittest. And you will have to adapt to survive. So over the course of this summary, you will understand and learn how to be a power connector. Power connectors are a new breed of professional connectors. And that is what we exactly need in today's world. This is your guide in becoming one. Chapter 1. Cultivating Strategic Relationships As a business professional, you already know no one is an island. How brilliant your ideas are. No matter how much money you have, you can't succeed in a bubble. And that is why we network. Understand the concept that people are stronger together and their cultivating solid relationship is the only thing and an ultimate key to success. That's why we need strategic relationships. Strategic relationships are exactly what they sound like. They are professional connections we form for aligning with the person that is contagious with our success. Strategic relationships are also valuable in a variety of different ways. For example, one relationship can be valuable for the virtue of contract it brings into our lives, where there's social capital that generates. Neither can be beneficial for the money it brings to your business. Though if you invest in strategic relationships with a variety of different people, you can build a solid network which can bring immense amount of success in your life. Everything's network should be different. But no matter what your network brings to the table, it can help you get a leg up in the business world and motivate others to respect and admire you. Your network can also be beneficial in terms of information. We have all heard the old adage, knowledge is power. And that has never been more true than networking. So, some of your context may not bring increasing capital to your business but can help you to get on ground through secret projects. That contact is still incredibly powerful. Your network can also help you with acquiring resources, labor or the right connections to reach your goal. And if you ever encounter an unexpected tragedy or find yourself out of the job, it's highly likely that your network will be able to find you a new job more quickly. It's also important to remember sometimes that the valuable connections aren't really the people who can directly help you. Sometimes a contact is beneficial because other people can know other people which could help you. As you can see, all networks are interconnected. It's like a spider's web. All you have to do is get stuck in, into the right web. But how do you build a strategic network? How do you know which network is solid? The author says you can assess your network by performing a few of a key tests. A question to ask yourself is, how many strategic relationships do I have? If the answer comes one or two, it is a call that you should start developing more contacts in your life to build a more comprehensive network in your life. Secondly, ask yourself, how many of your contacts are current? Are you investing in them? Did you meet them years ago in a dinner party? Or do you call them for a play of golf? In most cases, it is not enough to call someone 
for once in a while and show up in 15 years later when you need them. You should be maintaining your working relationships and ensure that you have a strong connection with your contacts. And lastly, develop your wish list. This wish list should consist of additive consistent people that you should build in your network, which will have a prior value to your partnership. Once you identify the people in your wish list, it's time to develop an action plan, which will help you go out there and get connections. Chapter 2 The Real and Me Peace What do you hope to gain from your relationships from your networks? As a general rule, everyone hopes for a mutually beneficial partnership, right? You assume if you have a problem in your life, the people in your network list would help you by getting you there and solving the problem by their contact means. Maybe people or resource means of information. And that's great. But when you build your strategic network, it's important to ask yourself, are you returning the favor? And one thing, remember, network is beneficial when it's mutually beneficial. Your contacts will soon get very short if you are only taking and not giving. That's why ask yourself every time, how could you add value to other person's life? Because when you really think the people who help others solve their problems are at a real enemy peace. And at its core, that's what a power connector means. It's about transcending the role of a stereotypic transcender. The guy who just snoozes in just a few business dinners. And becoming someone who comes and puts people together to accomplish something. Something that is great. Let's visualize a simple example. Your humble iPhone charger. So, think for a moment about your iPhone. It's smart, it's sleek, it's a supercomputer that fits in your pocket. It can do almost everything you need. But eventually, it's going to run out of charging. Well, then your iPhone cannot do anything about that. It lacks the ability to recharge itself. But your charger on the other hand, is plugged to a power source. It has everything your iPhone needs to recharge and succeed and fulfill its purpose. It's literally a power connector. And when you put that charger in your iPhone, it's where the two relationship builds. If you bring both of it together, it brings value to the life creates a mutually beneficial partnership. Okay, that example would be a little obvious, but I hope you get the idea. The literal job of a power connector is not about what they take, but about what they give. And if you meet your skills and needs with the right person, you can complement each other perfectly. And that's how you should Approach everyone in your particular contact when you are building a strategic network. However, you cannot stretch yourself to a more thin to become a power connector. Means you can also are a powerful source of success in your personal life. That means you have to prioritize. Even though your network is important, but every and each single person you connect with should be treated with utter importance. You have to prioritize your contents. Yes, you have to prioritize your contacts so that you know you are investing your resources wisely. 
That's where 5 plus 50 plus 100 joule comes in. The 5, 50, 100 joule is your formula for prioritizing your strategic relationships. The best part is its value is limited to your professional feed. You can apply its principle in every aspect of your life. So let's start with the 5. Your top 5 are your top 5 priority. The people like your partner, your best friend, your parents or your children. These are the children with whom you have a close contact. The people who matter more to you than anybody else in your life. Next is your core 50. These are your friends and business partners and some network contacts that fall in this category as well. These are the people you can reach out to at least once in a week. You like them and you have cultivated mutual beneficial relationship that is based on foundation of trust and mutual respect. Last but not least, your group of 100 people. These people might be people you would be close to but are distant in some way, like the cousin which you see only in your family reunions or a business partner abroad. These people can be you are always willing to work out and vice versa. Now because they are in distant contact, you are not always prioritized to help them out. Know the difference. Prioritizing your life with a 5, 50 and 100 rule saves your time, resources and energy. Chapter 3. Cultivate Diversity we know diversity is important in workplace and we all want to provide others with equal opportunities. But we don't always seek adversity to our closest partnership. Although we have friends with people in different parts of life, yet we share course to the people with whom our mentality matches more and the ones with whom we share our values together. We are always more likely to get along with the people who like what we like. And we assume the commonality being the closest. But what if we build our professional relationships on the same principle that we use to cultivate our circle of friends? Do you think this will be to a more harmonious company culture or a disaster? If you chose the latter option, you're exactly right. When any network is bereft with adversity, it can be myotic, close-minded and flawed. That's because we need to be pushed beyond our comfort zones. We need to be challenged and motivated by the perspectives that are different from our own lives. So, if you want to create a network that is truly healthy and mutually beneficial, then you need to cultivate the diversity. For example, if you are an old school executive and you grow up doing things old fashioned way, you might not click client to hit millennial that runs up in connecting the vegan cafe. Whatever, if you worry that you two have nothing in common, maybe you are uncomfortable with the new technology and you're free to looking stupid in front of the new generation. Or maybe you feel that the generation gap is too long and you can never get to convince them. This can be especially true if you feel that if you feel that your generation practices are superiorly the best or you automatically dismiss about those don't, kids and technology. But although they seem divisive, those problems are just a list of reasons that why you should go and talk to them. In this case, both of you would have something new and exciting to offer. You can both benefit 
from the change in perspective. A simple conversation is a great way to learn new things, make new connections and develop a healthy network. So, don't be afraid to reach out to the contacts whose values or expertise or attitudes are different from yours. Instead, be open to more opportunities. You will be surprised for what you can do for your network and for yourself as well. Chapter 4 Growing a Healthy Network Growing diversity brings us to our next step. Growing Network You can implement to the 550-100 rule with ease and seek diversity and connect to others all day long. But if your network isn't healthy, it will all be in vain. So what defines a healthy network? How do you grow one? For starters, a healthy network is one that is three-dimensional. Put simply, that you shouldn't have a group of people that alterize the same thing. Or maybe a network that only concentrates on just one particular thing. Instead, you should be surrounded by a host of connections which have a variety of different thoughts, talents, and skills to help you achieve your goals. For example, if your goal is to dominate the market and be the superior in your area, then your network should be able to help you with each and every different aspect that you would need to get to that goal. Like example, one of your contacts has the access to how to reach there. Other has access about how to weaken the competition. The other may have how to connect you with the right distributors and the other can become for you to lead you to a big good social sensation. A healthy network should be diverse, not only in the perspective that it includes, but the services it provides. But as we discussed in the previous chapters, your network should also be active. After all, your contacts are no good to you if you guys are no more in contact or if you last spoke 15 years ago. Without the high rate of responsiveness, you cannot be sure about the people in your network are a viable source who can help you. So if you want to access the real network, start picking out how diverse your contacts are. And if your current contacts do not meet those quite criteria, time to purge and seek new connections. The author points out that pursuing a connection who are different from you is a great way to build a different network which is healthier in all the aspects. Just because we all tend to get a little myopic and stay in our comfort zones, this only not limit our perspective, also limits our contact and spheres of our influence. So, if you want to create a network that is truly strong, invest in diverse relationships because it is highly likely that those relationships are going to have connections that we could never be making or never would be able to make. It would be quite beneficial to know these people in your life deeper and healthier. Final summary. You might know what it takes to be a good networker, but the social landscape of today's business world is changing continuously. Gone is the era is the traditional snoozer. Nowadays, it is important to evolve to be a networker called as a power connector. Power connectors are the people who connect the other people's and value and they do so 
with their skills and contacts. By practicing power connector principles such as 5, 50, and 100 rule to cultivate a diverse and healthy rule of network, you can develop a strong stretch of network of strategic people that will help you and those around you to succeed. That is all for the summary of the book The Power Connector. If you like this audio book, do give it a like, share, subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon for more such amazing book summaries as well as motivation coming your way. Thank you.